It was whenever that year was that like John and Alex fought, and then it was like uh, GSP and Hendricks fought, and I think it was an Anderson Silva fight, like right there. Just like the fights themselves, like the pay per views were just like money one after another. It's been like an entire year of that this year. You know what's incredible? <clears throat> the most incredible thing really about this business is every year we beat the year before. Yeah. We, we're still doing it, mm -hmm. you know? And Jesus, if we beat this year, next year, crazy. Is that going to be tough to do? It's always tough to do. Yeah. It's always tough to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, put up, you break all these records. And, and, and the thing is with this sport, too, is you, you get to a point where you're like, wow. I mean, you know, you'll leave an event one night and go, how does it get any better than this? Yeah. How does it get any bigger than this? And, 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 it, and it does. I mean, this year we're breaking... We're breaking, uh, you know, arena records. We're, we're, we're going to break the record in California. So the biggest gate ever in the history of California was 3.2 million. We had the gate. This next gate's going to be five million dollars. We're coming out of a global pandemic, and and you know we're, we're breaking every record we ever had. We're not just breaking them; we're shattering them. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's it's almost double. I mean, you said yeah, five point two. The biggest and gate ever. Earlier one was three nine. He said. So the the biggest gate ever in California history in MMA, we hold three point two million. Mm -hmm. Three point two. We're going to do five million in Anaheim in January. What do you attribute this to? Do you attribute it to going through the pandemic? Going through the pandemic. One hundred percent. Yeah. Our fan base has grown over 40% just this year. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. You know? So you take the fact that we went through the pandemic with, uh, you know, we've obviously been putting on great fights, and, 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 and the fights are incredible. The live event is incredible. I mean, there's, just, there's a lot of other things that, that go into what makes us successful. But, yeah, that's, that's part of it. Be honest. When you were grinding yourself into the ground, here in Vegas, trying to figure out a way to make things work last year. How much of your motivation was what you're referring to now? That you knew that if if we do this, it is going to just lift our business in a way that we've never seen before. Obviously, we knew that if we were one of the only sports on TV, or the only sport on TV, that it would obviously be big. But at that time, it wasn't about that. It was about keeping our employees working, keeping our fighters fighting, and keeping the sport going like I thought it should. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I knew that there was a way to, to figure this out. I mean, we, Abu Dhabi was already testing. They had tests. They had tests for COVID. Why did we not have tests for COVID? And how do we do it? How do we get them? How do we make this thing, this thing work? But the, but the bigger issue at that time was finding a venue that would, that would, that would carry the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, like this is a year-end review of it's a look back at 2021. But I was almost going to say like you almost have to kind of like lump the two years together, right? Because everything that happened in 2021 was was connected to what happened in 2020, right? I mean, 100%. is that kind of like these last two years have almost been like kind of one big chapter in the UFC's career, almost? Yeah, because when you look at it, you know, a lot of these leagues and businesses and whatever it might be, we're all trying to reopen in 2021. We never shut down. We were already rolling through 2020 and then right into 2021. Mm -hmm. And I, I was telling this to Hunter, actually, that uh, this year, it was almost like uh, you seemed like you weren't stressed out about anything. It was almost like you had been through literally everything that you could in 2020. And it was like nothing could stress out Dana White in 2021. Is that kind of what it felt so like? So true, 100%. Once we got through, um, it wasn't even getting through 2020. Once we, we did the first show, and we started to roll, yeah, I, I never looked back. Yeah. And he told me, it was like, you know, of course he felt that way because when you look at 2020, he was saying that one night you guys were in the office, you know, talking, fixing plans or whatever, coming up with solutions. And then literally by the time you're like, all right, I'm going, for, I'm going home. And then by the time you drove home, your plans for that entire day had, had, been, had fallen through. That's a true story. By, by the time I got home, I was literally pulling in my driveway. He called me and said, you're not going to believe this. Yeah, that's how fast the world was falling apart at that time. Um, you know, and, and you have to re remember, it's hard a year later to remember. It was unfathomable to, to think that, that the whole world would shut down like that. It didn't even seem like that could be a possibility. I thought in my lifetime, I would never see the day that a casino closed. Mm-hmm. I mean, a casino closing is a big deal. 
Casinos don't close. They're open all the time. Yeah. You know, they were all shut down. So, yeah, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on right now that, that you couldn't imagine. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we figured it out. We battled through it. And you get asked this all the time, like at the end of the year, but uh, what, what was this year like for you? To, to have those memories, you know, of those, those experiences that you're describing in 2020 and then to see the sport doing what it, what, what it has in 2021, what has this year been like for you specifically? Look, you said it. I mean, I've been stress-free. It's been uh, one of the best, if not the best year of my career. Definitely was financially in every other way, you know, the, as far as the business goes. But, um, yeah, no, it's been a great year. Incredible year. What, what was the thing you were most stressed out about in 2021? What brought you the most stress? What brought me the most stress? I don't know if anything stressed me out in 20. I don't know if anything will ever stress me out again, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, you know, after going through 2020 and figuring that out and making the decision, taking the bullets, taking the arrows, you know, that I took from the media and, and, and everybody else, um, I... I Probably will never be in a position like that ever again. Mm -hmm. Where are you at professionally in terms of goals? You know, you had the, the Zufa boxing thing for a little bit. Then you said, you know, late last year, that's got to be on the, on the back burner for a little bit because i got to focus on this. Um, I, you've told me in the past that you want to hold, like, a pay-per-view event that will just completely obliterate any other record because you feel like globally that's, that's an opportunity there out there for you that you can do it. Like, where, where are your goals going into 2022? Yeah, well, that's always been my, my, my long-term goal. Um, you know, this year we, we, sh we shattered the all-time pay-per-view record this year for, you know, for, for a year, calendar year. And um, it, w it'll end up being something like 8.6, 8.7 million pay-per-view buys in a year. And I truly believe that as, you know, technology continues to grow, the world gets smaller and, and these companies, whether it's Netflix, Amazon... ESPN, who knows who it's going to be over the next several years, there'll be three to five big players uh, around the world where we can all watch the same thing at the same time, meaning the whole world can. We might do 8.6 million pay-per-view buys in one night. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm looking at for the future. What do you think the future is in terms of platform? For you, like when you, it kind of seems like it's in a transitional period, right? You got all these different apps and stuff that you're buying on on your. Because we went away from the bundle of cable, some people are still doing that. But now we're doing these apps, and and it kind of seems transition to me, at least. You know, what do you see in terms of just like media consumption, where it's going? Yeah, um, like I said, I th I think that I think the cable is going to go away. Direct TV will still be around, but streaming. You know, these, these guys that were the big players here in the United States, um, it's all going to change over the next several years. And you see it changing now. I mean, cord cutting started probably five years ago, and it's literally just gone like this. And the people who are out in front of it, the Netflix, Amazons, ESPN, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out over the next several years. But for us, for me personally, I, you know, I, uh, I'm happy with ESPN. I want to stay where I'm at, and, and hopefully we end up with these guys for another 10 years. I know you've said you know, over and over again that you don't really care what happens in 2022 in terms of uh, places opening up, that you've found a solution to this, and you're going to just keep this train going. You also have said you know, numerous times is that that's how you grow globally. Mm -hmm. You take this thing. You let people see it live. Then you, know, you grow uh, homegrown talent in different regions. Is that one area that you've seen a little bit inevitably a decrease? Or are you, and... and how I know you said you don't care, but at what point do you you got to get back on the road to pick up the global expansion? Yeah, no, I don't care. As long as the world is back to normal, we'll go everywhere. You know, but some of these states, you can't do business in some of these states. You just can't do it. And you want to go to a place that's going to be more friendly for your fans, too, where they can go and actually enjoy themselves, whether it's hotels or restaurants or whatever it might be. When you go to a fight, it's about the destination. You want to go to a place where you can go out and shop and have dinner and, you know, do fun things. And then, the, the, you know, the big pinnacle of, of, of your trip is the fight. Mm -hmm. So until the world is a normal place again, there's many, many places that I'm not worried about whether we go there or don't go there. So um, 
to say, you know, we're not building our business because we're not traveling the show. Well, the world is in a normal place right now, mm -hmm. you know. So when, when it is, we'll get back on track. The fights themselves, the fighters themselves, who stands out to you over the last 12 months? No, I mean, there's so many. There's so many standouts. The fights have been incredible, you know, from, from Gaethje and Chandler to Pena over the last weekend, um, the uh, Israel Adesanya's, the, I mean, I could go on and on and on with all the stars that we have now and all the incredible fights that have, that have happened. Hamzat Shemaev, I mean, I could, I could keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you uh, about some of these guys specifically and I'll ask you about what happened to them in 2021 and sort of what you think um, the layout is for them in 2022. I think a good pr place to start is Amanda Nunes, you know, coming off of this loss to Juliana Pena. We've now had some time to digest it. I've seen some, some, some analysts, some opinions of it were that she did not look like herself that night, you know, mm -hmm. not taking anything away from Pena, but she did not look like herself that night. She kind of hinted that something was wrong with her. Have you talked to her at all? Do you, do you know if there was anything wrong with her? Do you share that opinion that that was not the right her? And what do you think is forward for her? Yeah, I talked to her that night. And she said she can't explain it, that her body locked up on her and that, that, and that she, she couldn't do anything that night. Her body locked up and she doesn't really understand what happened. But she wants to find out. She's going to dive in and, you know, talk to some doctors, performance doctors or whatever, and figure out what happened to her. Okay. So, um, but yeah. You saw that too? You, you shared that sentiment that it kind of yeah, wasn't her? And, and listen, she, she came out and started going after Juliana. And the thing about Juliana is, you know, she had in her mind that she was going to win this fight. And she put pressure on, on uh, Amanda and kept coming forward, kept coming right at her. And did what it took to win the fight. How about, of course, the big topic always, Conor McGregor. The year that he had... What do you make of those two fights? Now that, again, we've had a lot of time to sort of sit back and sort of think about what happened, see how he's been reacting to what, what happened. What is your take on, on his performances this year? Well, you know, the thing that I've been saying about him and I'll always say about him, you know, this guy's got plenty of money, but he is still super passionate about fighting, fired up to come back, and he's out there, you know, doing everything he needs to do to uh, – to get himself ready to, to, to perform again. How do you know? Like, what, he's telling you this? Yeah, or that? I mean, he's telling me, and, I mean, you see it in all of his posts and, you know, the, the way that he's acting, the things that he's saying. Yeah, he's, he's chomping at the bit to get back. I mean, this might be a tough question for me to ask someone in your position, but you've been around combat sports your whole life. Like, do you think this guy's going to get back to the top? Do you think he's, he's going to be that guy, or, or does he just have too comfortable a lifestyle? Has he just made too much money? You know, it's, it's, it's a question that all these combat sports athletes face. You know, Amanda Nunes is just facing it right now. You know, look at all the success that she's had. She gets upset big time, you know, the end of the year. You, it's, it's very similar. I mean, it's true. Amanda Nunes has a lot of money. And Amanda Nunes uh, has been very successful for a long time. And, and now she has a baby, too, which she's, you know, she told me she, she could not be happier with her personal and professional life. Mm -hmm. She's so happy right now. Um, and yeah, a lot of that, once you start to get a little too comfortable and a little too cozy, this is a rough business to be in, uh, to, to get cozy in, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? To get comfortable. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, and, and whether, listen, Connor, we all know he's talented enough. You know, um, what tweaks does he need to make in his training and what he's got going on to, to, to come back and, 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 and be on top again. I don't know. That remains to be seen. As of right now, what is your rough time frame and him coming back? Do you know? Well, if everything goes right with the healing of his leg, you should fight this summer. This summer. Okay. Um, at the time when he got injured, you were seemed, and I'm not asking you to match make. I'm just you know, having you talk as a fan of the sport here. You seemed like there was unfinished business between him and Dustin. You know, that was fresh, though. Now that, you know, some time has gone by, Dustin's fought again. Like, do you, do you think that there's unfinished business there? Do you think that's a fight that needs to happen, a fourth fight between them? Listen, I, I have no idea what the landscape's going to look like when he comes back. So to talk about, oh, him and Dustin, Dustin could be retired by the time Conor McGregor. I mean, you mm -hmm. never know what's going to happen in this sport. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know. You have to ask me this this summer what, 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 when, you know, we see what's going on in that division in the sport and, and figure out what's next for Connor. Okay, well, i got to ask you one more, though, is that he is saying that he wants to come back to a title fight. Is there any realm of possibility in which he could come back and fight for a title? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question until, until it gets closer.
Okay. Um, I want to move on to uh, to John Jones. You know, we didn't like I said. I want to ask you about what, what you thought of some of these guys, 2021, and what the the future might hold for him in 2022. What can you say about John Jones' 2021? What about his 2021? Yeah. He really didn't do anything in 2021. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he said he wants to come back in, in, in you know, next year, which is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at a few weeks away. And I'm sure a lot of his uh, decision making will come after we see what happens in the heavyweight fight. Um, so, you know, once once that happens in January, we'll know more about what John wants to do. How many conversations did you have with John all year? Zero. You had zero. No, we probably talked once. We probably talked once. I, 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 I think we had a, a text session back and forth one time this year. Mm -hmm. do, you, you, do you get the same feeling, I guess, from him at all uh, that is Connor that he's like eager to come back, or do you, like do you, do you think that's authentic? He and Connor are two completely different. You can't compare the two. They're they're complete opposites. Yeah. They're, they're not even remotely close to being the same. Yeah. Last thing out of curiosity, you know, one thing that John did do this year is he retained uh, Richard Schaefer. Did that mm -hmm. did that make any any? I mean, obviously we didn't see him fight, and we, he doesn't have a fight booked. But did it make any difference? Like, is it is, is there any difference now that he has an advisor with him, like Richard Schaefer, as before? Well, the difference is is that you know, as a fighter, if you decide that you want somebody to manage you. You have to have somebody that you get along with, somebody that you uh, can confide in, somebody that you believe in, somebody that you think is smart enough and, and is going to get you what you want. I mean, you, that, that's, that's all up to him. It could be Richard Schaefer, um, Richard Simmons, or, uh, you know, I don't care who it is, who they bring in to yeah. negotiate with us. It makes no difference to us whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to uh, Nate Diaz. And it's been pretty clear that he's talked about it, that he's got one fight left on his contract. I want to ask you, when a guy has one fight left on his contract, what difference does that make in terms of how you match make him, in terms of how you make decisions? Because i got to believe that it's different making matchmaking and putting him in an event and finding the right spot for him uh, when he's got three fights left on his deal than when he has one, right? Does it, does it make a difference? No, there's no difference whatsoever. Every time we put on a fight, what we're looking for is to put on, obviously, first and foremost, a fight that the fans want to see. You want you want the fight. The other thing you want is, depending on how much they make, you want a big fight. You want a good fight. You want a fight that matters. That that um, that you believe is going to create some hype, some energy, and sell. Mm -hmm. So that's which, that's always the same. If you have ten fights or no fights. Yeah. So which fights do you think? Because it seems like he wants to be. He wants his last fight. It seems like that, right? I mean, have you guys talked about extending him? Do you want to extend ideas? Um, yeah. I mean, listen. The, the, if we didn't want to extend Nate Diaz, we wouldn't, we, you know, we wait until the deal was up and, and that would be it. We've had lots of guys that have fought their contracts out. Mm -hmm. And Nate might be one of them, too. Mm -hmm. So knowing that and everything based on what you just said, what, what are the fights that make sense? The heavyweight sense? championships about the fighter's contract out. Yeah. 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 What, what are, is, is there almost like a small amount of fights that make sense then for Nate? You're kind of waiting for the right one? Um, I don't think we're waiting for the right one. This is a tricky question because I don't want to, you know, sit here and act like, you know, oh, well, Nate Diaz turned this fight down and that fight down. I don't want to get into all that BS, um, you know. We, 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 you know, I say this to you guys all the time. I'm in the fight business. I make fights. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by contract, I have to offer these guys three fights a year. Mm -hmm. And they have... They could say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're working it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would think that the biggest fight for him, the most obvious fight for him, would be Connor. And you just said that, like, you, you can't hold up people because Connor's, you know, this summer, the whole landscape could change. That fight almost almost doesn't change ever, though, right? Like, the trilogy fight, like, it's just kind of there. Like, the stakes Always of it. there. Yeah. So, is that a fight that you're interested in? Could you see that fight in 2022? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that fight could happen. You could make that fight. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of fights that you could make for Nate Diaz, mm -hmm. but Nate Diaz has to want that fight. How about Nick, man? I mean, Nick's return was interesting, right? I mean, he came in and was very open about some of the things he said and, like, the fears that he has going to the octagon, and he didn't look bad. You know, he lost to Robbie Lawler. But, uh, you know, you said that you were impressed with how he looked. Very impressed. Have you had conversations and, with him? And I had, no, but I had conversations with Lawler, too. 
who had nothing but respect for him and, and, and how he fought. Um, but regardless of how good he looked and what he did after such a huge layoff, I, I don't think Nate should fight. No, you don't. Mm -mm. I feel like uh, your mind may have changed on that, right? Because it seemed like you were kind of in favor of it earlier. It's not that I was in favor of it, but listen, he's a grown man, and, and you know he can do whatever he wants to do. I just don't think that that uh, I don't think that Nick does it because he loves it. I think Nick does it because he has to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I don't know, man. It's just that's why I talk about people. People always ask me, you know, what what's the key to success? What's it's all about being happy and doing what you love. It seems to me like. When I always talk about the people who sit in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic and go to a job they hate, mm -hmm. that's what I feel like when Nick Diaz is getting ready for a fight. He's in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic going to a job that he doesn't doesn't love at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually fascinating. But, um, yeah, for a guy who's been off as long as he has, nothing but respect for Nick. For sure. You brought up uh, that your heavyweight champion is fighting out the contract. And I do got to ask about this because it's not a situation we normally see, right? Francis Ngannou is fighting Cyril Ghosn, first pay-per-view of 2022. And he has said that, yes, he doesn't have, a, doesn't have more fights left on his contract. Mm -hmm. You just said that. What is the situation there? And, and I guess, why, how did we get here? Well, these things happen sometimes. You know, you, 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 you know, you don't always come to terms with people. And, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, I could... You know, I'm trying to be nice today. Go ahead. It's the be, end of the year. Say what's nice nice on your mind. No, listen, <laughs> when, you're, when you're a fighter, we just had this conversation a minute ago. you got to be careful who you get to represent you because that's what they do. And uh, say, I, I, I don't think he's had the best representation. Okay. You know? you, and you mentioned that, you know, around the interim title fight. And uh, you said that the deal was in place. But then um, at the last minute, it was kind of pulled from his side that the deal wasn't in place anymore. Mm -hmm. Have you tried to revisit the, the deal? Or do you just now wait and, and see what happens? Yeah, listen, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we were over at the, uh, I think we were in Abu Dhabi or wherever we were. If you want to be with us, we'd love to have you, you know. You don't want to be with us, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's all good. So just from a contract standpoint, if he wins, what happens? If he wins, what happens? So I think his contract, and this is off the top of my head, I, I don't know. His contract, he still has time with us after this fight on his, on his contract. So he'd probably have one more fight. Okay, okay. There's so a few other questions I want to ask you about. Kamara Usman um, had a heck of a year, man. I mean, can you put in just in terms of the year in which he had? And then um, it, who's going to be next? Who should we expect to see Kamara Usman fight in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this kid is what, – what this kid's accomplished since the Ultimate Fighter is, is unbelievable. Uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. I'm happy for him. And uh, going into next year, you know, he, that, that division stacked with some tough guys. So he's – he, he's he's looking at some interesting fights from Luke A to Hamzat to God knows who, you know. How about Hamzat? You know, it initially, I mean, he wants to fight every weekend. You at, at one point had even said you might get him another fight before the end of the year. That yeah. didn't happen. When can we expect to see him? Soon, I hope. Yeah, we're working on that right now. Is What is it like? I mean, it's easy for you to say it's hard to find him a fight, I'm sure. But really, what is it like behind the scenes? What is going on? What are the conversations like when you're trying to get this guy a fight? What's the conversations like? Listen, you know, I, I was saying the other day, no, nobody's overly excited to fight Hamzat, mm -hmm. you know, uh, except for Neil Magny. Somebody said, hey, Neil Magny said, that is true. <laughs> Neil, Neil Magny Neil Magny is one of those guys who will literally fight anybody. Anybody, anywhere, short notice, whatever. Magny's a stud. Um, but, uh, yeah, nobody's overly excited to fight Hamza. If everyone keeps turning him down, is it possible that he could fight for a title in his next fight? No. It's not? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Charles Oliveira, man, he also had a very big year. Um, what do you, is Gaethje is next, and, and where do you see, what kind of time frame do you see him, him fighting on? Yeah. Um, Oliveira, this last performance was, was unbelievable. I mean, the Chandler performance was incredible, too. Um, yeah, this guy's completely come into his own now, and um, I'm, I'm excited to, 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 to see him against uh, Justin. Mm -hmm. That should be a, a pretty nasty fight. Did you ever make a phone call to Habib again just to see 
Like, hey, man, there's this dominant Brazilian no. champion that people are pretty high on. I know. <laughs> you finally gave that up? People were hitting me up <laughs> on social media saying, you got to take another run yeah. at Habib. Habib's done. I mean, Habib just started his own his own deal now, and he's you know he's out there doing his thing. He, I, I don't think he wants to fight anymore. For sure. And, and, and I think, you know, losing his dad, he, he sort of lost this desire and excitement to fight. I think his dad was... His driving force, and, you know, telling him, let's do this, let's do this. And now that that's gone, I don't think he'll fight again. Now he's promoting. And you've not always seen eye to eye with other promoters in <laughs> combat sports. You ever see you and Habib? Listen, I, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I don't really fight with anybody anymore, man. It's, it's, it's like, listen, there's guys out there that I don't like, guys out there that I definitely don't respect. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't really fight with anybody anymore. Yeah, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> How about bantamweight? Yan versus, uh, is it going to, you got to do that, right? Is it yeah, a fight yeah, that you have to do? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Any I kind can't of time wait frame for that fight, it? too. Any so kind of time frame on it? Yeah, yeah. We, we just had matchmaking on Tuesday. So, yeah, we're, th those are all things that we're working on for next year. Okay. We got, we got a fun lineup, you know, stuff going on next year, starting with the heavyweight championship, which should be an incredible fight. Yeah, uh, Volkanovski is is it Max? Is it going to be Max next for him? Is Volkan oh it, at featherweight Volkanovski Holloway? Is that sort of the matchup we should expect? I don't know yet. Timing stuff needs to be worked yeah, out. Yeah. And how about Rose? Rose Namajunas at strawweight. Have you figured out who's going to be Carlos Barza? It will be 100. percent 100. percent I just just as a fan, some of the biggest questions that you have for 2022 that'll get answered, like if there's. If there's casual sports fans out there or guys who don't pay attention to every single fight, like, like for instance, mine would be like, just how good is Sean O'Malley? Or like, will Hamzat win a championship next year? You know, like for you, just as a fan, what are some of the biggest questions you've got going into next that's year? That's a great question. You know, the, the thing that's cool is we have all these up-and-coming guys that, that are exciting and fun. And, uh, you know, a, as fans, everybody wants to know how good are they really, you know, can they beat this guy? Can they beat that guy? And, and, and we're going to see a lot of that in, in 22. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to see Sean O'Malley fighting some real guys. You're going to see Hamzat fighting some real guys. Um, the Pena rematch, you know, uh, you know, you know um, with Nunes, will probably be the biggest women's fight of all time. That rematch will be the biggest women's fight of all time. Hmm. Um, what is the biggest women's fight of all time right now? Uh, Ronda Rousey and uh, Holly. It is. Yeah. Okay. You think it tops that? As far as as far as like buys, every, every way that it could possibly beat it, it will. Huh. I don't think it. I know it. Huh. It well, will be. It will crush that fight. It's set up. Twenty two is set up, man. I'm very very excited for it. Can't wait for it. Enjoy your time. Are you taking time off? You How too. are you spending the holidays? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to go away the twenty seventh. I'm going to go up to Jackson Hole for a few days and yeah. Cool. My all kids right. are going to snowboard. Yeah. I'm going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. Well, enjoy your holidays, man. We will Thanks. see you in 2022. Appreciate Thank you so it. much. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.